Hey, welcome back to the Breaking Bad Insider Podcast. My name is Kelly Dixon. Uh, we're here to talk about episode number 303 of the new season, third season of Breaking Bad. Uh, the episode is called IFT, uh, initials IFT. Um, I'm here with my executive producer, Vince Gilligan. Hello. Uh, the writer of this episode, George Masters. Hello. Uh, the director of this episode, uh, Michelle McLaren. Hello. Yay. And uh, our very special guest, uh, actor Dean Norris, who plays Hank. Hello. So guys, um... The first thing I guess we should talk about um, is uh, this episode is uh, really a, a little special and kind of hits home a little bit to you guys. I unfortunately did not um, know our casting director, but uh, we have dedication at the end of this episode to our casting director. You want to talk a little bit about that, Vince? Yeah. Sherry Rhodes, our casting director. Wonderful, wonderful lady uh, who plays uh, the bingo lady in this episode, the lady who's on the little uh, rascal, the little electric scooter uh, who uh, uh, gets... Uh, we assume off camera gets killed by the cousins in in our episode. She gets killed. Hey, the the fact that they drive off in her minivan. Well, I probably. thought they just left her on the road. Well, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> poor lady. <laughs> <laughs> but Sherry Rhodes was a wonderful lady. She was our uh, casting uh, person, our, our Albuquerque, New Mexico casting uh, director. Uh, since the pilot uh, and she had a wonderful career way before she ever met us and, and, and we were lucky enough to work with her she had a wonderful career working for among other people uh, Steven Spielberg she cast the movie or had a major hand in casting the movie Jaws uh, Sugarland Express I think I take some of this with a grain of salt I might have a little bit of, uh, of her credits a little off but she she was she was Spielberg's casting person. Wow. And she, she discovered some really wonderful actresses. She uh, discovered Reese Witherspoon. Yes, and Tess Harper. Tess Harper. Uh, and who we worked with, who's right. wonderful, Winona wonderful. Ryder, I believe. Wonderfully wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Right. Tess is our wonderful, uh, uh, plays Jesse's mom on our show. Mm -hmm. Wonderful actress. And Sherry Rhodes uh, passed away uh, from cancer uh, not too long after this episode uh, finished shooting. The time that we shot this, and you know, and you can speak to directing her, Michelle. At the time we shot this episode, we didn't realize that. Uh, we we didn't we didn't know that Sherry was uh, she had 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 gone into remission. I, I guess a couple of years earlier, yeah. and we didn't know that she, that it had come back. She didn't tell anybody. <coughs> And uh, we were casting this episode, and we were looking for the bingo lady. Yeah. And uh, the suggestion came up that Sherry do it. And uh, unbeknownst to us, Sherry had never been on camera before, but oh. always wanted to. Yeah. And we didn't know that. And we, th we said, Sherry, you're perfect. She yeah. auditioned for it, yeah. got the part, and had a fantastic day. She, she was incredible. She, uh, she drove that scooter, which uh, when we first uh, put her in it, and we showed her how to work it and everything, we did a little test run. Somehow the controls got switched into uh, a much faster speed, and we said action, and she went roaring down the ramp and just about flipped over on her oh, side. Oh, but she caught her, she caught herself, didn't didn't miss a beat, got got the take, and um, she nailed it. I mean, she was really fantastic. And then later we heard that she uh, she also taught a acting course, and she talked a lot in her acting course about doing that because it's the first time she had ever been on camera. Yeah. So she did a wonderful job. Wonderful lady and her uh, assistant Kira. Yes. Uh, who is who is now our New Mexico casting person? Uh, who who was trained? She's a wonderful uh, person. Kara is. She she was trained by the best. She was trained by Sherry, and uh, uh, now she has taken over uh, that role. And we're just we were we're lucky to have her. We we're so lucky to have Sherry. And she's just a sweet, wonderful lady with a lot of talent and a lot of heart. And uh, mm -hmm. heart is big. T teeny little lady from Texas. The so heart is big as Texas. That's and just a sweet, true. sweet lady. And we, we miss her very much. We and that's did. the dedication at the end of this episode. That's what that is. We were all very fortunate to, to work with her and to know her. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, George, you did a hell of a job writing this thing, oh, as thank usual. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll talk about the <coughs> teaser. Talk about the getting, getting well, the uh, teaser. Yeah, the teaser was fun. That was um, uh, the character Tortuga, who everyone knows his uh, head ended up on this turtle. So this teaser last tells this last yeah. year. Yeah. So this teaser kind of picks up before then and tells the story of of, uh, of uh, how that happened. And um, 
Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to shoot. I think <laughs> Michelle can attest to that. Well, Georgia, you, I know you don't like to see too much blood. I mean, like, like no, of course the not. Hint, not me. The hint of no. blood. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Vince. Vince doesn't like to see too much blood. Well, but then you, Georgia, I, I love like, blood. I think we were Vince like, more was blood. A, Vince was a little more worried dropping. that, yeah, between me and Michelle, that the, the blood would probably go a little, a little out of like control. But I can probably. Turned out great. It, yeah. it did. Yeah, it, yeah. it turned out great. It was. It's a wonderful teaser. It was really fun to shoot. Yeah, leaning into the Sorry. mic a little bit. We had, we had a lot of fun shooting it. It was great. Did a hell of a job. Danny Trejo, who plays uh, Tortuga, uh, last year and this year, uh, really, you know, his face is. Uh, everybody recognizes him. He, you know, I remember him in uh, hell. He was in Heat. Everything. He was in. He was in everything. He's in. Uh, oh, he's, he's just really what a great face. All the young yeah, kids. All the guy. young kids like him as uh, Machete and I guess the Grindhouse thing. And, Grind and then yeah. was uh, they're doing a new one. Desperado yeah. was he in that. I'm mm -hmm. not sure about that. But or Earl Murray. And my little kids, isn't he like Spy Kids or something? He's in some sort of yeah. Spy Kids. Is that what it is? I believe the movie, probably, yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, it's the turtle guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Wait a minute. You're yeah. little kids. Yeah. Did, you yeah. Know, did they see? Watch? Did your little kids see? Spy Kids is a kids movie. Oh, yeah. did they see no, the turtle? No, no. They, they, they didn't see it. They didn't. Yeah, they saw it. Yeah. Yeah. My my son, my my three year old, still walks around like he's yeah, like he's two goat, man. They see they see everything. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like I'm two goat, boy. <laughs> not me. He's not playing Hank. He's playing two goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so that that means that you know you got the 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 tortoise Otis back, huh? That's the same tortoise. We did. Otis, yes. Yeah. Yes. Shooting with the tortoise is an interesting experience. That was that was a first for me. The thing about <laughs> Otis is Otis doesn't like to sit still unless there's a big ball of lettuce mm -hmm. that he can munch on. So that that's kind of. I'm the same way, except with bourbon. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. We wanted to put a, a tortoise cam on his head, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and 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 look over, or actually on his back, and look over the the top of the the um, shell yeah, yeah. and the head up to the guys. But uh, right. it didn't it didn't quite happen that way because um, Otis has his a mind of his own. Otis so, has but his own. But he did a great he did, job. He did a really good job. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. now let me a shout out to the place where we shot that because I live out in Corrales. Did you guys oh, find that, that by coming out to Corrales? We did. Fantastic. We did. When no. you came out to see my house, we, <clears> or not? Uh, no, no. You knew beforehand. No. We, we came out, but we had looked everywhere, everywhere yeah. and we didn't find anything. And we drove up to this one, and I said to George, I go, wouldn't it be funny if this last one we walk into is perfect? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was. Because that's a, Corrales is, is a place where uh, myself and uh, and Betsy and Anna and, and Gunn uh, live when we're out there. And it's a great little town, and it was a, it's a, so much character. And that bar had so much character. And I've yeah. drank in that bar quite a bit. <laughs> Didn't you have some friends? You? And I had some friends yeah. there. Yeah, they all knew, right? Snake. Snake. Is Snake in the show? Yeah. The one Did I he make the cut? Oh, yeah. Snake's oh, and Snake oh, yeah. is like a great character the in Corrales. The guy with the white beard, yeah. Big, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's a great yeah. character in Corrales. And he's and apparently... No, we go into this little divey bar of scouting, and, yeah. and they were like, yeah, we know Hank. I mean, we know, <laughs> we know Dean. <laughs> that was my hang. It was, you know, that was a place to hang. So I'm glad it's in the show. It's also supposed to be Mexico, and that bar oh, just, just really weird. looked like a kind of a yeah. Dive, yeah it's called the Sandia. It's just a little shout out if you ever get the Corrales. Okay, great, great cool. Place. Yeah, it's a, it looks great, and that's a, one of only uh, two bars. One, <laughs> one, uh, only one of two bars in that particular episode. Mm -hmm. We got a whole other bar oh, scene. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and a whole other bar yes. scene to yeah. Mister. Uh, yeah, Mr. Dean here. We spent, no. a lot of, <laughs> spent a lot of time in bars. Yeah, yeah okay. so. we did. We did a lot of bar yes. scouting. Which um, was a big deal money-wise, right? It More was, than I would have ever thought. Yeah, it, it was very expensive because you're you, you have to shut the bar down, you have to control it, yeah, yeah. and then you've got to fill it with with people, and it's and you've got to light, light it, and yeah. it's it's a very expensive location shooting in any type yeah. of restaurant or bar or anything. But Dean shocked the hell out of me in that uh, scene because we were doing the big fight, and you guys cast. Uh, the ultimate fighter, uh, Keith... Um, Keith Jardine. Keith Jardine. And then we had this huge stunt guy. And um, and this was a... And, and, and uh, Dean's going to come in and beat the shit out of both of them. Yeah. And these guys are huge. Yeah. And I was so impressed with how you moved. I You absolutely pull it off, and it's a fantastic scene. And I, I was... I, I, I guess you're a fighter. Well, you're tell him about, all that tell about Keith Jardine's head gun to the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got some good stories oh, about yeah. that. First of all, Keith Jardine is a really nice guy because, you know, he just could look at me and kick my ass. You know? <laughs> and he was really a trooper to, to, to be a, to allow himself to get beat up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was getting yeah. beat up, but still. Yeah. I, I did a show, I did a movie with Jet Li, man, and he's the same kind of, they yeah. just have an aura about them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. In real life, that like they would just fucking just if they decided, you know, wow. bam, you know, yeah, and they're yeah, nice yeah, guy, yeah. super, super nice guy, right? Yeah. Oh, but, really, but man, really, you really definitely sweet. can tell that he could 
he could lay down some. Oh, it definitely. Oh, oh no, he's scary. Wow. He's scary. Yeah. And that was part of the huh. thing too. Is yeah. that you had to believe yeah. that Hank could beat these guys up. And you do though. And he totally absolutely. Does. Well, because uh, you you uh, actually have a lot of training in this area yourself. I did. Yeah, I have black belt in Taekwondo that uh, that I earned when I was in, in high school. And I did some boxing when I was in college and stuff like that. Wow! But, um, but it was a lot of fun. And Al Godo, our great uh, our great stunt guy, mm-hmm. really really helped that along. And, and uh, can we tell the scene of yeah, the story yeah. about that? So there's this one. There's a shot where we smash his where I'm, where I'm supposed to run him into this mirror, right? And uh, we smash his head into the mirror. It's supposed to shatter. So the the prop guy or is it prop? So special effects. Special, special effects. effects. Yeah. Yeah. Sets this uh, sets this thing up and he goes, no problem. And we set it up, line it up, line it up. Okay. And then we take him full into this thing. Bam! And it doesn't break. Right? <laughs> and this guy's got it. This guy's mean and he's tough and he's got a headache now. You know. <laughs> and they're looking at me. And I'm like, I hit him, man. I hit him right where he's supposed to hit. So we do it the next time. I hit him so hard that we put it. We we put it. Into the wall, he, he his shoulder, right into, the, into the shoulder right wall. Through. That's how hard we hit, yeah. and the thing still doesn't break. I know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So now we're going, what the heck are we gonna do, right? <laughs> so the, you're like, heck, heck, we'll just break it, you know, and yeah. we'll shoot it from there. Yeah, yeah. So we go, yeah, okay. So Al Godo goes, our stunt guy. He goes, yeah, all right, I'll break it. And he goes, bam, and it does. <laughs> he's like, knocks himself out virtually. I mean, literally. He's like, and it doesn't break. Wow. And so then Dennis Pierce said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just get a hammer. And he goes, tap. Tap. I, I'm not, I'm no, not exaggerating. He's like, oh, oh, oh. and then he's looking at it. I'm going, Keith, that's the guy. And uh, don't look at me. There's that's no the way that thing would have broken down. Like, well, no. I mean, he had hit like five times, slamming it with a hammer. It was, it was so harder, than a, it was it was harder than a regular mirror. It was harder than a regular. And it was supposed to be breakaway glass. It was breakaway like you might I, get a sugar. Yeah, or whatever. I, don't know. I never got the I never got the explanation of why. That. I I have no I have no that idea. That was so funny. But the, but, uh, but ultimately the shot was fantastic yeah, because what we right. did was other, is, yeah. is we we put a camera behind the mirror and the guys built um, a fake wall yeah. and a piece of glass that we looked. Uh, look through and so we have the shot um, as you'll see that Dean pushing Key Jardine right at the camera right. mm-hmm. and then the glass breaks and then we cut to the other side yeah, yeah. right so where the already now broken glass yeah, yeah, yeah. as these guys are coming off the wall but yeah. we left that work that day with a mm-hmm. huge gigantic hole in the wall, in the wall from yeah. shoulder, shoulder or yeah, head? Yeah, his shoulder, shoulder head and his head yeah. was supposed to hit the glass which it was did. just yeah. out of frame it, yeah it was, <laughs> you know, we could have had it on film but it was just <laughs> out of frame <laughs> Oh, that was funny. But then I gave uh, Dennis, uh, you know, shit the whole rest of the season. Yeah, Every time yeah. he gave me a hard time, I'm like, you know, I'm going to call Keith Jardine because he's still looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing his bash in his head. <laughs> well, you know how we got Keith Jardine in the first place? No. Uh, uh, I was sent a bunch of photos of, of stunt guys who could do the role. And, uh, and you know, there's there's not as many stunt guys in, in New Mexico as there are, as, as understandably, as there are here in Los Angeles. And I was looking at photos. I was like... Nah, that's not quite the look. Nah, what a meaner guy. And you and I both were. We were looking at photos together here in Los Angeles. Like, nah, before you went out there. Nah, not quite. And then they had, there's a different pile of photos for, for guys who, uh, for some other episode. Uh, the guys who, uh, let's 304. see. 304. Okay, so so 304, we're on 304. We're, so three, it's on three, three. Okay, I can't yeah. talk too much yeah. about what comes next. <laughs> Sorry, we're doing these out of order. I guess a little confusing. Are they two ghost cousins? <laughs> It's the Abraham Lincoln flashback. Right, okay, right. We need a guy look like Lincoln. No, but uh, um, and I'm looking through this other batch of stuff, and I'm like, this guy looks familiar. Wait a minute, my brother. He's in all that Ultimate Fighting stuff. He's telling me about it. this guy's Keith Jardine. I even know this guy's name. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, why the hell is he not in the, in this pile? Yeah, nice. So we we called up and said, uh, why can't we get Keith Jardine? And he trains in Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, he's you like, gotta Google this guy, man. There's a there's a there's a YouTube video of this guy doing a dance in like Denmark. I kid you not. Yeah, It'll, it it is the best. A dance, really? a dance, yeah. Oh wow. He like calls it. It's like a street fair. Yeah. And, like it's before he was famous. Yeah. Trust me, man. You'll love it. And he, and he's like kind of causes some stuff. Then they start playing this beat, and he starts yeah. doing this. <laughs> it's great. That's cool. I can't really yeah. picture him dancing. Oh, dude. Oh, he's, he's like, <laughs> I can picture like him kicking ass. Fighting, but... <laughs> you know? it, it, he's in his yeah. early days. It's great, man. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway. So, so I'm curious because, um, you know, you, we got, you guys do a lot of work about, I don't know, about three or four months worth of work before we even start shooting. And you guys come up with, uh, with you know, story ideas and, and series arcs. So you guys decided to introduce a boss. Like, we don't know who, like, is over Tuco or over this, so you guys now have a new character, and he's the one who basically does the hit on, what's the dude's name? On the turtle? 
Tortuga. Tortuga. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ron Bolso. Ron Bolso. So, uh, did you guys want to talk a little bit about him? Yeah, wonderful actor. Uh, uh, just explain why he, uh, why his name is uh, Juan Bolsa. Oh, it's, um, uh, well, you know better than me, so it's Johnny Sack. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, Juan, of course, is, uh, is John, Johnny. Uh, Bolsa is Spanish for handbag or bag. Right. Johnny Sack was the guy in uh, Sopranos who uh, oh. was, was sort of the uh, equivalent uh, capo or boss or yeah. whatnot, uh, equivalent to Tony Soprano. So it was just a little shout out to the Sopranos. Right. But uh, oh, Javier funny. Grajeda, if I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, uh, did a wonderful job. Javier is a wonderful actor. I hate to say it, I never even met the man. I hope I get to meet oh, him at the premiere. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah. He's great. And we, oh, we, uh, we, we read a lot of people for that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was challenging because we didn't want him to be the uh, cliche uh, bad guy boss. Yeah. You know, we wanted him to be a little bit, uh, yeah. a, a, a little bit different, a little step yeah. above that. Good, good point. We didn't want him like doing the mustache twirling kind mm -hmm. of. I will kill him. You know, right. mm -hmm. one, he wanted a very gentlemanly kind of mild, soft-spoken guy who, nonetheless, could sit there and not even flinch as he watches a guy's head get lopped off with a machete. That's yeah, what that's we're right. looking mm -hmm. for. Javier did a wonderful job. He did. Turns yeah. out, uh, I mean, we cast him because we cast him because he was great. Uh, but turns out he's old friends with uh, Brian Cranston. That's right. In fact, it's it's uh, it's funny because um, we all decided, okay, let's let's cast Javier. And literally two minutes later, I got a text from Brian saying, "Hey, I hear a friend of mine's coming in to uh, to read for the part, and he's really fantastic. His name's yeah. Javier." So I mean, the timing was was mm -hmm. uh, was perfect. So we let Brian think uh, it was all because nice. of him. Yeah, I just yeah. realized I just blew that. <laughs> <laughs> Should write whatever you need, man. Whatever you need. Love you, Brian. Get, so you get guys, some brownie points. Brian didn't listen to this shit. Don't worry about it. You guys, you guys decided though that was a big, um, uh, a big deal because you guys decided to play a whole very long scene in in Spanish. Yeah, with Vince subtitles. Loves to right. do that. I love making people who don't speak mm -hmm. Spanish sweat <laughs> by having them uh, having to make them learn Spanish. Who doesn't speak Spanish? Well, I'm jumping ahead here, but... Uh, well, Javier is fluent. So. Yeah, Javier is fluent. I kind of figured he was. And then we did ask. We were only casting people who, who yeah. were right. bilingual. I'm jumping ahead. I'm not talking about this particular scene. But, uh, you know, the funny thing, uh, our wonderful actor, again, and that's a sequence in this episode, mm -hmm. wonderful, our wonderful actor, Giancarlo Esposito, who is such a sweet guy, such a wonderful guy, plays Gus, uh, really does not speak Spanish. And uh, so... Uh, so talk about that some, about uh, the difficulties. Well, uh, um, Giancarlo, when he has to speak Spanish in the show, he we uh, pre-record it for him so that he can listen to it. We also got him a, uh, uh, what do you call it, Rosetta Stone um, yeah. course. And, uh, and then we have... It Danish. We got on the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. It didn't help much. He's good with languages, so that helps. <laughs> Don't give away the pre episodes. Um, and then we had a translator on set with us who... Uh, who would stand right beside me because I do not speak a word of Spanish, and uh, so it was it was challenging to direct them as as um, and as, as even more challenging for them uh, who had to who had to learn it. And he we wanted him to sound like he was quite uh, fluent. So, yeah. but he did a great job, and he's and he does a great job because there's a few times he has to. He's a wonderful actor. Yeah, yeah, Giancarlo is fantastic. Oh, well, we got a bunch of we're blessed. How many wonderful actors we got? You know, I, I got to say that when I read the uh, the outline um, for this episode uh, way back in probably like I don't know August or something, um, I remember like seeing this. I could not believe what I was seeing, and it it was kind of par for the course for you guys. I knew that you know you guys would do something like this, but um, uh, uh, Walt's moved back into the house, and now he's sleeping in the baby's room, and um, and so uh, Skyler's basically locked him out of his own room and his own bathroom. So, can you guys go kind of a little bit into how you had uh, how you made this decision? This uh, I can't even bring myself to say it, but you know what I'm talking about. He makes your rates. <laughs> in the, uh, Whose idea scene. was that? Uh, that was actually mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, and 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 uh, we said in a previous podcast how uh, uh, we forget who comes up with what. Although I will say that was definitely your idea last season to have uh, uh, Tortuga's head blow up on the turtle. That <laughs> yeah, was a good explosion. example of me remembering exactly whose idea was whose. Because <laughs> that was in that turtle episode. It was uh, the guy's head's on a turtle. Awesome. Let's go to lunch. Yeah. And then, and then George is like, and then the head blows up. I'm like, George, for fuck's sake, 
Come on. <laughs> Stop gilding Is the lily. enough to put a head in a turtle? I'm like, no, it's got to blow <laughs> up. got to blow up. Of course, you're exactly well, that right. Well, turned out to be... Oh, like, like Breaking Bad. The, the, the best... <laughs> one of the greatest yeah. Breaking Bad moments. Goes up to 11. Exactly. <laughs> this one goes to 11, you know? You, you see, does one better. But it was... Uh, that was definitely George's. That was great. But uh, peeing in the sink, I, I remember, because I remember everyone yelling at me about it. Ugh. Yeah. All the writers oh, were yes. like, all the writers were like. <laughs> oh. I remember the peeing in the sink. Yeah, yeah all the writers were. I was were lobbying like, hard for the peeing in the sink. Yeah, yeah, you were but on there my side. There was a big side. debate. I remember that because debate. I actually came into the room. You guys were debating that. Melissa and I did. Well, yeah. And you wanted to know it. And it well, stayed in. It was too far. It stayed in. Yeah. yeah, well, I, you know. I, Wait, actually, why was it I, too I, far? I, I don't know. I, I always thought, gee, you know, we've got, we've got to watch a guy, watch the hero of the show, watch a, watch a pretty girl choke to death in her own vomit and not do anything. How is this, how is this worse than right. that? Yeah. But peeing in the sink uh, sets off bells of people. I don't know. I, um, for my part, I, you know, any port in a storm, you know, yeah, but, uh, really. yeah. you know, if uh, I got to well, go, but wait, what was like the debate to the bathroom? Right. Come on. <laughs> you know, uh, my knees, uh, you know, I'm with you. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember all the uh, you, you, you were on my side. But yeah, all the other writers, totally, yeah. not all of them, but a couple of them were like, eh, "Come on, why is he peeing the I'm sink? Like, come on, have you ever peed in the sink before?" Mm. Jeez, mm. you know, mm. a half filled milk bottle. Or... House. <laughs> <laughs> it was the kitchen sink too. So. I'm curious though, Michelle, because because yeah, yeah. obviously, yeah. obviously, you know, it had had a big, it was a big deal around here. But what was it like there in Albuquerque when everybody else read it and you guys were shooting it and. Well, actually, I didn't get to shoot it the way I wanted to shoot it because the way I wanted to shoot it was going too far. <laughs> <I'm bad. laughs> but that's uh, right. You wanted to. You wanted frontal as opposed to <laughs> no, I didn't. over the shoulder. No. <laughs> uh, no. Um, you know, the funny thing is, uh, the way we shot it actually, it's a really beautiful shot, which is, it is which a is shot. Uh, lit. You know, as as, as Michael Slobos always does, he. he yeah. Lays everything gorgeous, so uh, um, I think everybody would like this shot. I mean, it, there's a lot of jokes. There was a lot of laughing and teasing and and that kind of thing. But uh, it was funnier when he, he came out really of the room in his it. underwear and um, <laughs> and was going and knocking on the door. And Brian can't take his clothes off without doing something funny. So mm. that's as far as I'll go to say. There but there's few, some there's a few outtakes. Yeah, <laughs> vegetables. Ew. Okay. Oh. Ow. Now, now, now that we're channeling Spinal Tap. We are all very professional and mature until, until Brian's on set in his underwear. He has a good time with that, yeah. Was, there were a lot of laughs there. Yeah. But it's, still, it's, 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 a, it's actually it's a good moment when he's, he's so frustrated and so uh, out of place in his own home. Yeah. And the only thing he can do to rebel in that moment mm. is pee in the sink. Yeah, all yeah. joking aside, it's yeah. a pretty dysfunctional it's, yeah, family. It's a, it's, it is. It's yeah. a very passive-aggressive act. It is, yeah. At least he moved the, the uh, plates. I'll yeah. give him that. <laughs> <laughs> it, takes, it takes the dirty dishes out first. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty passive-aggressive, pretty screwed-up family at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And Skyler's going off to, uh, to see her divorce attorney, played by the wonderful Julie Dretzen. Who, Sam's uh, wife. Sam, 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 Sam Catlin's wife. Yeah, and Julie is One of our writers, Sam Catlin. Julie's fantastic. He's a writer. Sam's a writer on this show? <laughs> I thought he was just an intern. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy that parks your car. That guy, okay, he's yeah. a writer? <laughs> wow. And we must have lost that iCarly game or something. I wish Sam was here. <laughs> You need to staff up a little earlier in the season. You know, oh, hey, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was hoping he was here. <laughs> But Julie, Julie, she did a great job, and it was actually a very hard part, a very challenging mm -hmm. part to play, because mm -hmm. uh, as a, a divorce attorney in this situation, she didn't want to show too much, uh, we didn't want her to show too much compassion, yeah. because she's got to be a little bit of tough love here. I mean, yeah. she's got a client whose husband's a, a, a dealing drugs. She sees mm -hmm. a dozen people, at, and that's which, which is what we learn in this episode. Right. right. But she's, yeah, she sees a dozen clients a day. She can't give them all her heart and soul. Right, yeah, and she can't she's get too personally. Yeah, yeah, she can't be personally invested. Yeah. But Julie is a real sweetheart. And so it was very hard for her at times. And she, she'd say, are you sure I'm, I'm, I'm not being too cold? Or I said, no, you're doing great. And she nailed it. She's, she's fantastic. Yeah, she's, yeah, she is really fantastic. Yeah, she's wonderful. But she's not cold at all in real life. I mean, she's, yeah. she's a sweetheart. Yeah. As is the lady playing across from her, Anna Gunn, uh, well, does a wonderful yeah. job. Because she's great. got, I mean, you know, IFT. Yeah. IFT. Yeah. IFT, now I know what it hey, is. you know what, yeah. I, I think, WTF. I mean, I'm, I'm always a fan. I'm a fan of hers. I know that, you know, that there there are those who, who like 
Skylar and those who <clears throat> really have problems with Skylar. But I, I think she's in the right, you know. I think she is, too. We I mean, should talk about that. I mean, yeah. the, you know, all joking aside, IFT, I effed Ted. I, I mean, then, and, and uh, you can why does us. she? I fucked Ted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you better say it now because we can't say it on screen. So. You'll see it on well, the DVD. We, yeah, yeah, we, we actually, we Good for you. I did. But, um, <laughs> Every other guy on the set. Just made my way to him. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we actually got a special compensation to say it on camera. It went to. Once a season or something, we're allowed yeah, to. The rules are Byzantine when it comes to broadcast standards. Byzantine. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, um, uh, we and and I'm not complaining because uh, you know I did seven years in the X Files on network and we couldn't. You know, it was a good day when we could say bastard or right. something like that. But uh, we have a TV 14 rating on AMC and we are allowed to say a combination of the words shit or asshole. Only five four, times. Four, 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 four times. times. Four times. Season one, it was six times, and then they got kind of whacked on by their uh, AMC, who's very much on the side of us taking things, not just for the sake of taking things as far as they can, but when we need to take something as far as we need to take it, they're mm -hmm. very much on our on the side of uh, of creative uh, freedom, mm -hmm. uh, shall we say? But uh, they have their masters too. They have uh, their uh, their uh, affiliates. affiliates and and uh, uh, carriers, the different uh, cable and uh, satellite networks that carry them. So they, you know, they got to abide by their TV 14 rating, which means that, uh, yeah, it was a little more fluid in season one. We got away with a little more. We used to be able to say uh, the F word uh, in season one, knowing full well it would always be bleeped or, or in right. our case, dropped. Yeah. Audio drop. Well, but now they won't even let you write it. No. Uh, wow. Now, now we can't. Since season one, we were not allowed. In season one, we got away with it a few times. Now, we get a dispensation once a season to say it once and then drop it. And we wow. used we used it here the last line of this episode, mm -hmm. and it gets audio dropped. So you what you see is I, Ted. Yeah. Right. But you know what she you know what she says. Yeah. And Anna does a brilliant job in in doing it because she says it as simply as if to say. Pass the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And that, that's a that wonderful was, scene. It's a great scene, and it was a, it's it's a great moment. And by the way, talk about what a great director you are. You directed the hell out of this yeah, episode. And uh, this was your second episode for us. Last year, you did your first <clears> episode, <throat> which was uh, uh, the wonderful Four Days Out, written mm -hmm. by uh, the guy Sam Catlin. Yeah, yeah, Sam Catlin. Wow. Okay. Intern <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you kicked that one in the ass. You kicked this one in the ass. You got two more coming up yeah. after this one. I have coming I up this season. Very fortunate to have. Uh, uh, directed three episodes this season, so you're like the blonde Catherine Bigelow. That's what you. Oh are. God, your lips <laughs> to God's ears. Oh my God, I should be you're so lucky. Because you, because you direct these yeah. action scenes really well. Yeah. I'm going to say that I, I, I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of my good episodes directed by Michelle, and I, I think it's great. I really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. You got the next one, Michelle. Well, I'm not going to give anything away, but the next one coming up that Michelle directed that you it, have it, quite a major yeah, part in is great. kick ass. Yeah, and I really, yeah. I, 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 I really enjoy it. So. Well, I, 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 it's the Mutual Admiration Society because, Dean, you are so incredibly talented and it's such a pleasure to work with you. It really is. And, the, you know, the thing is with Breaking Bad, I, I always... <laughs> hey, there's cameras. You take credit? You take credit. Uh, but, the, you know, it really, it all... And it's, 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 uh, it, I'm not sucking up to you guys. It all starts with the writing. And the, the, what all, the, all of us directors will say what is such a treat about directing on Breaking Bad is the scripts. And it really, the most terrifying is, is we don't want to mess it up because we get oh, these incredible gems. And, and the way that you like the show to be shot uh, is very, very creative. And um, it's a lot of fun. It's, wow. it's very challenging within the time frame, but a lot of fun. We should talk about how we met. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we met on The X-Files. We you did. Were our, you, what was your official title? You were I was our a producer. co-executive producer on The X-Files. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, uh, the first episode that I produced uh, with you guys, or the first or second one, David directed. Then the next one, Jillian directed, and then you directed. Or, or maybe it was in a different yeah, order. Yeah, I got to tell this story. Yeah, okay, Michelle. Yeah. Didn't we tell this last year? I hope not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, we did tell this well, last year. Uh, I know the story. All right, well, I won't tell. Suffice it to say, <laughs> uh, any other TV schedule, any other TV producer would say, you can't have a scene where Agent Mulder's running through all of Los Angeles and it's completely empty. <laughs> <laughs> but Michelle figured out a way to do it. Wow. We should, only only time ever in the history of 202 episodes of TV and two movies, as far as I know, X Files. Only time we ever shot on a weekday, a week, a weekend. weekend, a weekend. 
we're shooting at uh, like six in the morning on a Sunday morning downtown LA, same neighborhood where uh, Michael Mann did the big shootout in yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, Michelle got the whole thing set up, spent like fifty grand on one shot, and it was worth every penny. As far as it I'm was, it, you know what, Vince, you wrote a great scene. It was a, it was a spectacular shot. I've never seen so many police officers yeah. in one location in wow. one time, which was a bit. We scary, got down but. there, set it all up, had the camera looking. To, up two streets, as far as the eye could see, not a single wow. human being anywhere. Because the idea was Mulder had accidentally wished away everyone on the planet. Mm-hmm. But uh, and then you directed your first episode of TV. It was an episode I wrote, an episode called John Doe, right. X File episode. Did a great job with that. Turned okay. downtown. Uh, what's that? Uh, Pomona. Pomona. Downtown Pomona. I keep wanting to say Pacoima. Downtown Pomona into a little sleepy uh, d- Mexico. uh, Mexican <laughs> desert uh, uh, border desert town. It was it was great. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven when I found the first thing I was ever going to direct was going to be written by Vince Gilligan. So, thank hey you. me, <laughs> yay! I got very oh, yeah, pass out wonderful. that money, jeez. It's, it's been wonderful. <laughs> 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 so what? Who else? What do we else we talk about on this one? You wrote a great script. Thanks. You're good with the action stuff, man. Yeah, it's fun. It's you do fun the. Write. You wrote yeah. the one last year. Uh, uh, Charlie Hay directed. Did a Grilled, great job. Yeah. Grilled uh-huh. with uh, Tuco out in the. That's out, right. That was and, uh, Mark right. Mark and, the, and number five, on um, the first, the fifth one. Of last um, season. Or the no, the first season. The first, first season. season. Crazy Hands. Oh, yeah, excellent! Crazy hands the one that introduced one. Tuco. Mm-hmm. That uh, you know we have real great luck with female directors because Bronwyn Hughes who directed that one. Oh, she that's, did a great. That's job. still she one of my a, favorite shots. I have to say ever that, that it is show. that that is a shot yeah. that I hope that I can uh, uh, copy one day. <laughs> yeah, where he's throwing the, the <laughs> yeah. crystal. What you think oh, is crystal meth? The the well, the that one too. Yeah. But the yeah. throwing of the uh, the piece of uh, fulminated mercury right at the lens. And how they did that, it was, I think I've told this story before too, but it bears repeating. It was actually on a rod, a dowel, a very thin dowel or steel rod. And it was arranged so that it would slide directly at the camera so you wouldn't see the rod itself. And, right. and, and, he, and Brian pretends to throw it, but he's just, the guy behind him out of frame is sliding it along and it goes right into the lens. And uh, awesome shot. Yeah, that was this really cool. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of the great lines. Yeah, 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 that was a great one. Good episode, yeah. man. You Thanks. know, I, yeah, I wanted to ask you guys, too, um, you know, this is one of the things that you guys did this year, um, and I'm curious about how it came about in the writer's room, where, you know, you, you I mean, the, I guess one of the coolest successes of our show is that we've got, you know, basically an odd couple for the zeros, you know, an odd couple for the new century, and you have made a decision to keep our two pieces of the couple away from each other. You've got Jesse, who they are not involved at all, and um, I'm wondering how you guys came up with that, and and how you guys, how long you guys wanted to keep them apart. And About Brian and, and uh, Brian and Aaron, yes, Jess, Jesse and Walt. Exactly, that's a good question. I don't. I think it sort of happened organically because, yeah. I mean, we leave Walt, Jesse in rehab. What where we left him at the end of season two, where you know, I mean, Walt's pretty much, he's facing the dissolution of his family right now, and he can't. He's not off with, with Jesse. His mind is not around, you know, cooking meth with Jesse right now. It's about, I mean, you know, the whole reason he went into this thing to begin with was kind of for his family, and now he's faced with the prospect of losing it. So, you know, at the beginning of this season, he's really about trying to trying to get that back in his life. But you know what's interesting, too, and it just <clears> kind of occurred to me, um, I hope I don't, you know, think myself into a corner on this one, but what occurred to me is, you know, we've been doing a little bit of talking up here in the editing room about season one and the pilot and the pilot really fo- really followed Walt the whole way I mean you know there were only a few scenes in the pilot that actually were not involving Walt and you know as we progressed obviously it was more Walt and Jesse and you know but now you guys have a lot of factors you know a lot of convergence that you're trying to write and that's a very different game this year especially than it has been for the past two seasons you've got to keep these guys alive you got to keep Jesse alive you got to keep uh, the bad guys are alive. All these different things. You know, does that make it tougher? Does that make oh, it yeah. easier? And production wise, it makes it tougher. But yeah. But it's got to be. It's got to <laughs> yeah. be tough in the writers' room because you guys are constantly saying. I mean, I would imagine you guys are constantly saying, "Okay, well, we haven't seen like it's almost like okay, we're with Walt, but we haven't seen Jesse for a while. What's Jesse doing? You know, Absolutely. and this and, one and, we start really seeing that Jesse moved back into his house, but he's listening to the voicemail of Jane, you know, spending his time. We don't really know what he's spending too much time in. And then he also, in this episode, decides to 
make a go of cooking on its own. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just curious because I know that that has got to be a harder job. Yeah, because you're not following one character. Now you're following a lot. I mean, clearly this season was opened up a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Right? Is that a harder job or is that an easier? I mean, is that not not easier, but doesn't that give you more options in terms of, 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 things to do? It's an oddly hard question to answer. It's I can tell you from a production standpoint, it's made this season a lot more expensive, having a lot more wide-ranging uh-huh. sets. Yeah, right. Uh, whether they're on the stage and we have to build them, yeah. or whether it means we have to spend a lot of money to truck everybody out for the day. Right. For instance, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we had a lot more stuff last season and the season before in the White House. Right, because the family's together. But when the family dissolves, suddenly we got yeah, yeah, we got all the different kinds of houses. And but from uh, a writing point of view, doesn't it give you more options? Doesn't doesn't it make you or not? Doesn't, don't you feel more like? It's a weird. It's a weird. It's a weird thing. It's it's always tricky. As interesting as uh, as uh, as as Hank is, as interesting as Marie is, as interesting as uh, Walter Jr. is, uh, it's it always feels a little off subject to just check in on a on a B plot or so we don't really do B plots no, yeah. or C plots everything mm-hmm. is always in service of the A plot which is the ongoing criminal enterprise therefore right. uh, it's easy to you know uh, the way we get into it with Hank often is you know how is Hank uh, coming along in his uh, pursuit, look, of, pursuit of Heisenberg right. And then uh, how to and then we we, uh, we sort of uh, tail onto that you know how are Hanks uh, you know, uh, Howard Hanks' post-traumatic stress uh, problems affecting, affecting Marie, yeah. and uh, how is the divorce yeah. affecting Walter Jr. And mm-hmm. and it's it's an interesting thing because we're always looking to get uh, all these other wonderful characters right. that we love writing and we love seeing mm-hmm. into the story. But if we don't do it in a in a in a fashion that that stems from the uh, the A plot, right. it always feels a little kind of tacked on. Yeah, I think this this episode is a good example because I mean to me as a writer one of the primary things of this episode is really a Skylar episode and to really sort of examine what it means from her point of view to have discovered you know the big revelation at the end of or at the beginning of this season actually the husband's a meth dealer and how that affects her and now you know she's sort of been trapped in this very unhealthy toxic relationship and what she does to try to break out of that so you know again it's sort of Yes, it stems from Walt, but the fact that they're kind of in different places, the characters are in different places at the beginning of the season, really gives you an opportunity, I think. And we did this really well, I think, this season, is really delve into the other characters, into their point of views and their psyches. So I think it served our show well. And I'll just go out there and say, I really do. I think if you look at the, the shows that get great recognition over the years, they've always been, you know, The Sopranos, I mean, all of The Wire, you know, in today's world, you know, Mad Men, um, yeah. you know. I got 12 characters on that freaking show. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, for me, it didn't feel like none of this was really by design. It's just sort of organically where the characters went. Like we, right. I, don't, I don't think we made a decision where, oh, they're not going to be together. I think it was just that's where the characters were, and we just sort of had to yeah. take it the way it went. And if we if we had forced everyone back into this little nuclear wow. unit, then it would have it would have struck me as kind of false a little bit. All of this that's a, all of this back to your original question, uh, Kelly, which is a, a darn good one. We in no way, shape, or form wanted to, you get one good one. <laughs> we in no way, shape, or form wanted to keep uh, uh, Walt and Jesse apart this season. But yeah, I mean uh, that's where the story took us. And uh, and a lot of the season was in the writers' room. Was for instance, aside from how do we get the other characters in more often? How do we get mm-hmm. Walt and Jesse back together again? Right. And we love writing those scenes. Too. We love writing like, those scenes. But but you, no. you can't just. Mm-hmm. Wish it and make it so. Not if you're going to be honest, and uh, people can tell when you're being conversely when you're being dishonest with your storytelling. So, for my money, they stayed away a little more than I would have, uh, apart from each other, a little more than I would have liked this season. But uh, that changes coming up mm-hmm. in further episodes. Not to give anything away. And, you know, uh, I got a question also about that, sort of along the same lines. Is I know that at some point I remember you telling me that one of the rules on the X Files was that nobody finds out anything before Mulder and Scully find out. But on this show, we've got, we've definitely broken away from that, and that's kind of why I was asking the other questions, because you've got a lot of plates in the air, and 
My thing is, I think that that it is could be easier, like Dean says, it could be easier because you've got a lot of options, but it can be harder because you can't leave one behind while you go down this path. I and mean, we have to keep, you know, Hank's story alive because it, it's so integral. You know, Hank being on the trail is so integral to the rest of the story, but yet we know that as an audience. But Walt doesn't know that. And so you, you've bro- broken away. I'm not saying the X-Files rule should be the rule, absolutely. Well, it, but yeah. you have now, I mean, from the first season, we kind of were along for the ride with Walt. For the most part, we were with Walt. Yeah. I mean, not always, but definitely in the pilot. Yeah, you know, no. we, we, and then we start to branch out. But this season, you've got, you know, you've got a lot of plates in the air. And so we as an audience know, I mean, we know yeah. about that Walt is being pursued. You know, but Walt doesn't know. That's true, and that made it tricky in the renders room this season. We, uh, it's it's not a rule, but it's a it's a good guideline. In general, I wouldn't even say it was an X Files specific thing, but it's a good guideline to have your protagonist. To to and let me put it a different way, it's a good it's a good rule of thumb to you to not have the audience know a lot more than the protagonist knows. And we're breaking that rule, yeah, in this season. No, we were we were aware that was going on. It was by we definitely knew that was happening. And then we had to, you and, know, we yeah. just so you, you play the cards you're dealt, or that you deal yourself, yeah. right. or Kelly, that the story deals you. From, from somebody who's not uh, a, a writer, I had the privilege of a few times being in the writers' room before we went off to Albuquerque to shoot. And the most impressive thing to me was how organic you guys are in the room, how true you are to the characters and the stories, and how they seem to evolve and come alive in the room. For good or bad, thank you. For good or bad, you got to do that. you got to play the cards. you got to play them as they lay because if you start making up new rules, people, people, you don't have to be a writer to call bullshit on mm-hmm. bad writing. So, mm-hmm. anyway, bad storytelling. <laughs> All right, so um, I guess uh, we should wrap it up. Uh, join us next week. We're going to talk about episode 304, which is entitled Green Light. I do know that one. I cut that one. Yeah. Um, We've already shot that one, so we already know how that one came out. I mean, the, the podcast. This is, where I, this is the one where I catch him, right? Is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody for listening, uh, uh, and let's go break bad.